Nestled away in the idyllic Taranaki town of Oakura, Sam Johnson's Rhythm Ace Studio is at the heart of New Zealand music. I met Sam at a dodgy telly sales job in London. The, the musician that you see before you now was not the man I met nearly 30 years ago. He played in a band, but he wasn't this music producer, studio owner extraordinaire that you see before you. So it was one of those sliding doors moments. It's worked out beautifully. <laughs> so meeting those parents for the first time, I luckily, and I, not that you can tell now, but I luckily chopped my ponytail off about a week before we flew. I don't think, I think it must have been some sort of subconscious premonition that a ponytail and some gold earrings wasn't going to play too well in Stratford in the early 90s. I, this is probably very rude about Stratford. I'm sure they embraced the long ponytail and the hoopy earrings. But I do remember thinking, I'm glad I've cut that ponytail off. That was a very insightful move. I remember him vividly getting off the plane at New Plymouth, falling to his knees after that 24-hour trip and kissing the ground. So that was my parents' first introduction to Sam. <laughs> I was like, oh, thank God, we've, got, we've made it. <laughs> After a successful career as a sound engineer and producer in London, Sam moved to Taranaki with his wife, Mel, and their two children, where they decided to roll the dice and set up their own recording studio. Moving here was, it was this huge sort of shock, but, but, but a brilliant one as well. And maybe there's something about an outsider's eye on a place. I don't know. I'm not sure if there's any truth in that. But, but the, the things that I find amazing about running a studio here, Oakura particularly, I think. Um, I, I know that it's, uh, perhaps people view it as being a bit of a shishi seaside place, but I think it's really rootsy still. I think it's got a lot of soul to it. Australian-born Taranaki artist Renee Milner has recently finished her latest EP recorded in the unique atmosphere that Sam has created. So the space has a lot to do with, you know, um, how how you feel coming out here. Like it's it's a beautiful space to, to walk into, but not just uh, within the studio, but also the nature that you see outside. Um, and I think Sam has an incredible knack of um, bringing out the best in the artist. Mark Armstrong from hit group The Slacks feels the same way. First of all, Sam Johnson is special. Right, uh, because he, uh, because of his like love, absolute love and passion for music, like it, it, you can see that when he is at his desk, when he's putting a mic on somebody, when he's listening to a playback, he's actually just coming alive because that's what he loves to do, and he tells us all the time. It's like I, I just love it's just such a pleasure of my life to be able to make music with people who are passionate about music. There's a singer-songwriter tradition, in uh, maybe in New, in New Zealand, but certainly in Taranaki, there's a big singer-songwriter tradition, which is great. Renee came with a huge amount of desire to present her music as, as something wider than just an acoustic guitar and a voice. Not that there's, I mean... Just acoustic guitar and voice is great, but she wanted. She had sounds in her head and visions for her songs, which had, which was such a delight to try and flesh out because you've got this great song, heartfelt lyrics, brilliant vocal, and then you're colouring it, and that's such a privilege because we were ending. We ended up sort of really speaking the same language about a lot of stuff, and you could put these ideas down and see if they fitted the song, and it was a lovely process. Fly me back, for example. We, uh, I'd, I'd always perform this on the guitar. Um, and Sam said, why don't you play that on the piano? Because I play piano as well. And when I put the piano part down, I just loved it. It just gave it a different feel. It gave it a, a real, real nice bassy feel to it. Um, and then we kind of layered it up with these different synth sounds. She has an old fashioned quality to her voice and her songwriting. I say that with as the highest mark of respect. It's not it's not that she sounds not relevant, but she has that sort of thing in her where you're where it's the same thing that when you hear, you know, you listen to a Joni Mitchell song and you and you think, oh that's really beautiful and clever and it stimulates you to listen to it and you can listen to it over and over again and hear something new in it. Lovely. He's not just a sound engineer, he's a, a producer as well. Uh, and I think um, 
for me, the process of working with him um, is a very unique process in that I will come to him with a song and, and with this, the general structure, uh, and then he, uh, we work together uh, producing that track to work out what we think that track needs. You say the things I dare not say. I think he's actually got a bigger picture. So I think his ability to step back and see um, what an album could be or what a band could be or what a song could be, I think that's what a good producer and, and engineer does and Sam does that well. There have been a couple of projects particularly that have been, I mean, you just end up feeling like you've been through some sort of wonderful adventure together. I think it's like anything, isn't it? Partly it's the time you spend together, so it's just great. You see them over the course of a year, year and a half. You see them most weekends and you just become... Friends, you know, taking that Slacks example, it was incredible because it felt like we'd really emptied the tank of the, of the ideas. It's like every song had been really realised. And then you can listen to something and know that it's your best work. I mean, I've put music out myself, which I know wasn't finished. And it's a horrible feeling and you're like, ah, oh, it'll have to do. And then you think, oh, no, that will have to do is never a phrase I want associated with music. Do you know what I mean? Maybe with toast. Or, I don't know, lunch or something. But not shoes, but not, not with music, you know. We've worked with other producers before where they've been a direct, you know, like, you need, to, you need to do this, you need to do that, or you need to play it like this, or get rid of that symbol or whatever. Well, whereas Sam will, um, he kind of skirt at um, what he wants you to do and makes it feel like much more like a collaboration. So it's a discussion rather than a direction. The last couple of tracks that we've, created together, we've taken turns putting the layers on. So when I say layers, I mean uh, the different soundscape that we're using. So uh, the, the soundscape uh, for the last two singles uh, is definitely more of an electronic sound. Uh, and it's, um, it was a lot of fun to put together. Recording music, like an artwork, requires passion and emotions, good and bad. Oh yeah, we've had lots of tears. Yeah, you, you definitely, because it's a quite a vulnerable space to be in. It's, um, you're bringing this, you know, this thing which is very precious to you, the song, and you're bringing your heart in and you're bringing your, your ideas. Um, and sometimes there's a lot of vulnerability about that. Like, is it, is it good enough? Is it this? Is it that? Is it gonna be, is it gonna reach the audience that you want? I'm so increasingly upset with how we, uh, how we measure music success, I think is what I want to say. And the projects most recently here that I've felt most proud of have been ones where the art is at the front of it. The, 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 I know that those projects have been completely honest, really deep, resonant records that feel completely truthful to the artist that's made them. Some of them are made with relatively ugly men. So you know what I mean? You can't really dress them up with too much lippy and send them out onto the stage to give it the chess hands. Uh, but I don't really care about that. I mean, that's, that's a, I don't mean to be flippant by, about that. I just care that we've made something that I know is absolutely legit and sounds great. Some of my nicest memories here have been like when we, we've done a layer or we've done a day and we sit back and we listen to what we've created. Um, and it's, it's really beautiful. Like even when I listen back to the tracks now that have been completed, I can remember, oh, the time that we... We were in the hallway there and we were doing the clapping for the track, you know, like there's these little moments of beauty that, that come out. Mm. Creative practice comes with a huge risk, doesn't it? And, I, and, and you can do all of the hard work and you can put all of the ideas down and it can still not work. And that's for no, one, no one's reason. Sometimes it just doesn't line up and you have to go, ah, oh, OK. I mean, it is, it's totally, that's totally valid. And it is about, I mean, you are constantly on the edge of, not failure, because I think the fact if you're making music at all, you're, you've already won, but you're constantly on the edge of battling that thing of what's in your head versus what, what can you get to come out of the speakers. As a punter with non-musicians' ears who's removed from the making of, you just come in fresh. And then I just look at her face <laughs> and know, <laughs> it's and know like, if it's been a whole day ooh, wasted ooh. on Yeah. Yeah. There's never loads. There's never, no. It never screams, oh my God, what have we done? <laughs> Thanks, that's, a, that's a lovely. <laughs> damning <laughs> review. <laughs>
we'll probably never ever be able to capture our imaginations, you know? But in the process of exploring that, you can often end up with something different and, and even more exciting or, or, or different and as exciting as what you imagined it was. Recording and producing music in Awakura is a far cry from a dodgy telesales job in London. But for Sam Johnson, it's paying off in so many ways. Andy Jackson, Local Focus.